Hello everyone welcome to Naso Academy in the previous lecture we have understood procedural versus object oriented programming in the last lecture we got to know that object oriented programming is quite useful to develop large scale applications so it is important for us to understand object oriented programming in depth there is no doubt This chapter is dedicated to make you understand basics of object oriented programming. This is the second lecture of this chapter and the name of this lecture is classes and objects. In this lecture we will understand the two most important elements of object oriented programming that is classes and objects. So without any further delay let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics The first topic of this lecture is classes First we will properly understand what are classes and we will also understand how to define classes in this topic then we will move to the second topic where we will understand how to create objects of classes Finally we will understand how to access members of a specific class So these are all the topics of this lecture let's start with the first one that is classes Now what are classes A class is a user defined data type that allows combining data and functions into a single unit So think of a class as a user defined data type it is the data type which is defined by the user and it allows us to combine data and functions under a single unit it also helps in hiding data and functions from the outside world allowing controlled access and preventing unnecessary or accidental changes so with the help of a class we can hide some data and functions from the outside world thus it allows controlled access or we can say limited access to the outside world by outside world i mean the world outside the class so class provides controlled access and hence it prevents unnecessary or accidental changes to some data and functions that we hide from the outside world now the main question is how we can hide some data and functions from the outside world This can be better understood from the syntax of the class. Here is the syntax of how to define a class in C++. First we need to specify the keyword class followed by the name of the class. Then within braces we can provide data members and member functions. Data members are those storage entities where we can store some data and we call them members of the class because they are defined within the class so that is why we can also call them data members on the other hand member functions are those functions which are defined or declared within the class that's why we call them member functions we can categorize data members and member functions as private and public if we put data members and member functions under private label then they are only accessible within the class this is what i have specified here they are not accessible to the outside world in this way we can hide data and functions from the outside world allowing limited access and preventing unnecessary or accidental changes this is quite useful in many different real world applications because we may not want 
outside world to access the internal details. If we want to hide internal details, then we can put them under the private label. This is the essence of data hiding. And data hiding is one of the biggest properties of a class. And indeed, it is the property of object-oriented programming. I hope this is clear to you. In technical terms, we call data hiding as data abstraction. We only provide some interface to the outside world and we keep internal details away from the outside world. So that's the concept. Now if we put some members under the public label, then those members are accessible to the outside world. So they are accessible outside the class. I hope this is clear to you. So in this way, we can define a class in C++. Now we have understood the syntax properly. Let me tell you one more thing that it is important to specify the semicolon at the end of the class, that is after the closing brace. If we do not put semicolon here, then we may get error from the compiler. Also, by default, all members of a class are private. So if we do not provide the private label, then the data members and member functions are treated as private. If we want some data members and member functions to be public, then we need to specify the public keyword. I hope this is completely clear to you. So with this, we have understood the syntax of how to define the class. Now let's implement this with the help of an example. Let's understand through an example how to define a class by following this syntax. Here is the example. Here I have defined this class called student. I have defined this class because I want to store information about a student. I want to store roll number and marks of the student. But I don't want that the roll number and marks should be accessible to the outside world. For this purpose, we need to define roll number and marks under the private label. Now we have these two variables under the private label. Therefore, these variables are inaccessible outside this class. I have made these members public. Here I have declared these two functions, put data and display. These are member functions and they are public. This means they are accessible outside the class. Here is the put data function with parameters A and B. I have declared this function to put some data in these variables. Although these variables are inaccessible to the outside world, but indirectly they are accessible through this function. This is the essence of data hiding. We are hiding internal details, but we are making accessible the interface to the outside world. And here is the display function to display the data on the screen. By making these members private, we do not allow these members to be manipulated by the outside world. This is the benefit of making them private. So with this, we have understood how to define a class in C++. We are done with the first topic of this lecture. Let's move to the second topic where we will understand how to create objects of a specific class. Now, before understanding how to create objects of a class, first we need to recall from the last lecture what is an object. An object is an instance of a class. By instance, I mean occurrence or we can say an example of the class. Let's take one example. Let's say we have the class vehicle. Now, for that specific class, we can define objects like car, bus, truck, 
or even bike. These are all objects or we can say instances of the class vehicle. So that is the meaning of an instance. Object is just an instance of a class and class is the blueprint of the object. We can think of it like a variable of a class type. This is much simpler to understand as well. We know a class is a user-defined type. For that specific type, we can define variables and those variables are objects. This is just like we define a variable of a predefined type, like an integer variable. Now, let's see the syntax of how to create an object in C++. Here is the syntax. We need to specify the name of the class first. Then we need to provide the name of the object, followed by semicolon. This is very similar to defining a variable of a predefined type. We know when we want to define a variable of a predefined type, then we need to specify the name of the type first and then we need to specify the name of the variable. Here also we are doing the same thing. We are specifying the name of the class first and then we are specifying the name of the object. Now we know how to define an object. Let's implement this through an example. Here, I took the same class student from the previous topic and here is the main function with S1 as the object of the class student. I have created the object of the specific class and through this object, I can easily access the public members of this class. Please note that this object is defined in the main function. Therefore, Private members are not accessible to this object. Private members are only accessible within this class. But public members are accessible to this object and therefore with the help of this object, I can call these functions. So I hope this idea is clear to you. So this is how we can define an object of a specific class. We can define as many objects as we want. Now let's understand one main thing. When we define a class, the data members do not get memory. They are just declared. When we define an object of the class, then only the memory is allocated for the variables. And those memories are then associated with the object itself. So we can say whenever we create an object, the variables get memories. And therefore, an object has copies of the variables. If we create another object, then memories will be allocated for these variables again. And those memories are then associated with the second object. So in short, we can say each object of the class receives the copies of the data members. Now we need to understand this, that an object would be able to access its own data members. It cannot access data members of some other object. This is very important. We will understand this properly as we proceed in this course. For now, just understand that memories will be allocated for these variables for this specific object. This is what I've written here. Memory is allocated for variables of object S1. Now, this is about data members. What about member functions? Member functions have been allocated memory only once. And this memory is shared by all the objects of the class. It is not the case that memories for these member functions will be allocated on object basis. Every object shares the memory of the member functions. So with this, we have understood the concept of objects properly. And now we know what happens to the data members and member functions when we create an object of the class. 
With this, we have understood the second topic as well. Now let's move to the third topic and let's understand how to access class members with the help of objects. We already know how to create a class in C++ and we also know how to define objects of that class. Now let's learn how to access members of the class with the help of objects of the class. We need to follow this specific syntax. We first need to specify the name of the object, then we need to provide the dot operator, and then after this, we can provide the name of the function which we want to access. And within parentheses, we can provide the arguments to the function. So this is how we can access a member function from the object. But understand, if the member function is public, then only we would be able to access it. Otherwise, we would not be able to access it through the object. Now, what about data members? The same rule is applied for data members as well. We can specify the name of the data member after the dot operator, but the data member must not be private. If the data member is private, then we may not be able to access it through the object. Now, let's take one example to properly understand how to access class members with the help of the object. Here is the class student and here is the main function. I have defined this object S1 of type student. Now, this object can access these members. These are public members, therefore, this object can access these members. But this object cannot access these members directly. Here, through this S1 object, I am calling the put data function and I am passing these values to these variables. This is how we can call this function. I am following the same syntax. I have specified the object name first, then the dot operator, then the name of the function, and within parentheses, I have provided the arguments. In the same way, I am calling the display function as well. So this is how we can access public members of the class with the help of the object of the class. Now we know how to access class members. This means we are done with the last topic as well and we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.